Okay, for the next uh, presentation, uh, we have Edgar Mloe from the World Bank Tanzania, and he's going to talk about uh, flood risk man management in, in the city of Dar es Salaam. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, today I'm very happy uh, to share with everyone uh, on how we did in creating a platform that engaged uh, the community in the drain cleaning. Uh, so today I'll be talking about the development of a flood risk monitoring system to support a flood risk reduction through community-driven drainage cleaning and drain adaptation uh, in, in Dar es Salaam city. Uh, Dar es Salaam is a primary city uh, of Tanzania and it is expected to become a mega city in a few years to come. Uh, but it is uh, impacted by flooding, sometimes even with minor rains and storms. And <clears throat> the main cause is not necessarily heavy rains, uh, but mostly inadequate drains, uh, poor waste disposal and uh, poor urban planning. So what you see here, uh, this image shows, shows one of the flooding impact that happened. But several ones happened, like in 20, uh, uh, 2019, 2011, 2014, and 2015. All those years, uh, there have been floods and people were affected. Also, uh, the economy was being impacted at large. So, <clears throat> to reduce the flood risk, uh, the, the World Bank funded the development of uh, this platform. Uh, we call it from Taro. It's a Swahili word. In English, you say adopt a drain. So, before the development, mapping activities were done to collect all data uh, of the drains for the Dar es Salaam city. And that was done by a project called the Dar es Salaam Ramani Uriya. So in English, it is uh, open maps. So Dar es Salaam Lamani Uriya collected uh, all the drain data uh, for Dar es Salaam city, and it is as you can see from the imagery. So uh, mostly that data was collected through community mapping. Actually, community members and university students played a great role in collecting such data. So using that data uh, and our local expertise, we were able uh, to define the problem. So uh, actually the focus is, uh, was to reduce uh, floods and increase resilience. And this problem uh, affected the vulnerable people and the economy. Mostly those people who live in, uh, in uh, I can say in slums, or those people with a very low economy, they were the most impacted. And also the social cultural factors uh, which shaped this problem uh, were actually the complex problems in solid waste management, dichotomic uh, citizen behaviors towards sol solid waste management, and also uh, lack of resources for adequate emergency response. Uh, also, there have been enough evidence to show that this problem really exists. There have been casualties in recent evidence, as I mentioned, uh, also city uh, operations who are being impacted. impacted. So we try to frame the problem, we try to look at it at another angle, and we said, uh, how can we focus in enhancing communication between the communities and the emergency stakeholders, of which in Dar es Salaam are the municipalities uh, who normally help during uh, emergency. So the community is at the lower level and the municipality is at the higher level. So we are looking for a way to enhance communication between these two extremes. <coughs> so, uh, and we are focusing on how to support the public authorities or the municipalities to be able to know at any point in time uh, what is the status of drain cleanliness in Dar es Salaam. Uh, and also, uh, what are the most critical areas that need to be cleaned. As you can see, uh, 
normally the municipalities were using maps, and the map you see is also part of the project of Dar Manuria. They have been creating uh, those kind of maps, and the municipalities were using them to make decisions. But as you can see, the map uh, as a static data is not dynamic. So we need a way uh, to make this data more rich so that it could help to make decisions. And also the community who are largely impacted by floods, they kept wondering, like, they are not causing the problem, then where does it come from? Even though they are doing uh, maybe poor waste disposal, but still when the flood comes, they have someone to blame. They say maybe the government. Uh, and also they were looking on a way how can the municipality help them to clean drains. They can do cleanliness themselves, but at some point they need help from the municipalities. So how can they reach the municipalities? So based on a little stories that I've been talking about, so the idea of Tuamtalo or adopted drain was born. So Tuamtalo is a risky, uh, risk, uh, flood risky monitoring system that aims at facilitation, collection, dissemination, and action on a local drainage information. As you can see, local people in the streets, they, may, they are doing cleanliness, but we need a way uh, to centralize that data at, uh, at one place so that other people can easily see. So people are doing cleanliness in different places at the Dar es Salaam city, and then we collect that data. We put it uh, on one platform. So at any point in time, a person can visit this site, can visit this platform, and be able to see the status of drain cleanliness for the whole city. So if it is approaching the rain season, it is easy to make a decision on which areas to focus with and make sure you clean the critical areas. So technically, this, uh, this is, the, uh, is how Tom Taro looks like, and that is the landing page. So the map you see contains all drains uh, for the Dar es Salaam city, and the drains are colored based on their status, as you can see. So uh, a, green, uh, a green color shows that it's green. Actually, they are labeled. I, I hope you can, you can see. I'm not very good in colors, too. But uh, this dashboard shows like a summary of the status of all drains you can see, like how many drains need help, how many are dirty, how many are clean, how many have been adapted, and how many have not been adapted, or no one is looking at them. So we believe uh, centralizing uh, drain information, which is very critical in causing flood, we believe it could help in managing uh, emergence, especially to mitigate uh, to, to support community cleaning. It is easy to know where are the problems when you have enough data centralized in one place. And it is also easy to know when do we need to clean. Also, uh, it connects uh, the communities with the public authorities. The communities are doing cleanliness, then they are reporting the cleanliness status by using our platform and then the municipalities can easily visit the platform and know uh, where in the city help is being needed. Also during preparedness, this platform could also support to prioritize early warning action, alerting the community, and even understanding the status uh, of community cleanings. Uh, I would also like to welcome my colleague to take you through uh, some features of uh, Tuam Talo, or Adapted Rain. Good afternoon. My name is Beatrice Mkumbo. I'm a software consultant at World Bank, and I was a lead front-end developer on this platform. I'm going to take you through f a little bit faster because the minutes is almost over. As you can see on the platform, when a person comes first on the, pla on the platform, what he can see or she can see is all drain in Dar es Salaam. 
and we found this it will be easy it will be hard, hard for someone to to select maybe which area is he staying or whatever so we decided to add another feature that user can s okay 10 minutes okay okay i can go a little bit slow <laughs> okay we implemented another feature that shows the street user can go to the platform and select which street is he or she belongs. Like you can see over there, a user can type and select maybe um, from this street. And you can only view few drains of your street. And uh, as, you, as my colleague mentioned earlier, the street have been, the, I mean the drain has been labeled according to the status. Like blue ones are the drains that need help. The green ones are the drains that are, those are clean. Orange one are the drain which is not clean. And uh, when user click to the one drain, she or he can see some detail about that drain. Like when you can see there over there, I think it's explained itself that the drain is clean or is not clean. This is clean because as you can see the color code is green and it indicates that the, the drain is clean. And we decided to put it this way so that any person who can come and visit our, our platform can view a little bit summary about the drain. But if you want to adapt the drain, you have to do some other activity to the, our platform because you cannot adapt the drain if you are not registered to the platform. And there when we come to introduce the function, I mean the, let's say it's a function, I'm a developer so I cannot put it in a good way, of registering user, and when user registered, she or he can be able to adapt the drain and to do other functionality in the platform. One of the functionalities that can be done in the platform is like, maybe I'm staying at a certain place and in front of my house, there is a drain passing through, and I'm supposed to adapt that drain. How can I adapt that drain? That is when we came and implement that feature. When you register, you can adapt the drain. And if you adapt the drain, you can view all drain that you have been adapted. As you can see there, it's Edgar Mloy has been adapted a certain drain. On that left side, you can see all your drain has been, you have been adapted. We are allowing user to adapt more than one drain. You can adapt as many drain as you can. And um, you can also add another person to help you to clean your drain. If you feel like my drain is a little bit hard for me to clean by myself, I can choose another person to help me on cleaning the drain. On the left side, the last button is where you can click and add someone you want to help you to clean the, to clean the drain. After finalizing to clean the drain, you are allowed to not to click, to click to say like my drain is already cleaned, like changing the status of the drain. Because at first your drain will be dirty, but when you finalizing cleaning the drain and the ward leader or local street leader came and approved like yes he has been cleaning the drain, you can go to your platform and submit that I have been cleaned the drain. And uh, also, there's a lot of features on this platform. Because we are Tanzanian, we speak Kiswahili, and most of people, most of people they, which are they going to use this platform, they are local people. So we decided to put the Swahili way. You can see on this side, that's you can choose on changing the language. If you, cannot, you don't know Swahili, you can use English, or you can use Swahili. But most of us, we prefer to use Kiswahili, because that is our local language. And uh, I think I can welcome again my colleague to finalize some stuff. Okay, uh, I would like to use this last immunity uh, to just share a little bit about the success and challenges uh, when you build this platform. Uh, we were able to train 20 plus uh, uh, street leaders, ward leaders. Uh, 
We faced some challenges, especially because of uh, smartphone penetration. As you can see, to use this platform, you need to have uh, a smartphone that has a browser. So that was a little bit of challenges. And also, you may find a street leader as a smartphone, but they are not very good at browsing the internet. So the idea was to, to build a USSD uh, version of TomTaro so that people could use the featured phones and still be able to report the status of the drains. As you can see, the platform is responsive. You can access it via mobile phone and PC. Thank you very much for listening. We are very happy to present this to you. Thank you. Uh, what's the motivation for uh, people to assign to your service and use this uh, compared to uh, compared to just ringing the neighbor and organizing some local event for cleaning the, the system? Or Sorry, uh, can you repeat again? Uh, like um, this, this is for like. What's the motivation for people to sign to your system to to your application and use it uh, compared to kind of talking to neighbors and or like? Do you find it's easier for them to kind of sign and uh, find some people to help or? Oh, okay, thank you. A very nice question. Uh, the motivation behind people using our platform is uh, currently uh, every street in Tanzania, uh, if you are living in a place and the drain has passed in front of you, you have to contribute for cleaning the drain. You have to, you have to, you have to pay. Yeah. So sometimes you may find your drain uh, is, uh, I can say, the depth of the drain is very small, so you need uh, the government to support you to, ex to, to make it more deeper. So you need help. But to ask help from the municipalities, it was very difficult. So through this platform, it is easy to report on this platform that my drain need help, needs help. And the other person, the next house, may also report that this drain needs help. So it is easy to get help in that way. So the motivation is actually connecting the communities to the public authorities so that they can easily be supported. Maybe I missed the beginning, but uh, where are the thing, uh, getting the data from? The data of uh, like the geometry. We are getting the data from Dara Manuria. They're the one who are mapping all the drainage in Dar es Salaam. Yes, and to, to, to add more on that is Dara Manuria collected that data, and then uh, they shared them with us in a shape file. So we used uh, QGIS and PostGIS. Actually, we converted that shape file into a database, PostGIS database, and then we are using PostGIS to, to load that data. Hi, it's me, Massimiliano. I was wondering, uh, do you have a sort of time slide to see uh, how things are changing? in the reporting of the people, uh, how things are going better or worse uh, to see the, the changes of the status of the channels. Oh, thank you. Uh, there is a possibility when you view details of one drain to see the history of drain, uh, but uh, we don't have the time slider and we think that feature is very important in the next version, we'll include it. Uh, I have a small question. My colleague already took part of my question, and I will make it shorter. Uh, do you think that your work is helping to solve the flooding problems in Dar es Salaam, or is just cosmetic? Because I'm a geographer, and I already work about uh, flooding situation in town, and you have to take a lot of parameters in consideration to solve flooding problems. Most of the time, the problem is based on the, so the quality of the soil, or the quantity of the rain, or the slope, the elevation. You have a lot of parameters. But what is, what is the output of your work? Did uh, 
it solves something in Dar es Salaam. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, just stress on where we stand on this platform. For us, our main focus is to make sure that there is good data so that decision makers can act on it. So without this platform, if you go to Dar es Salaam, it is very hard, for instance, for a regional commissioner to know uh, which, munisp uh, which municipal uh, needs uh, more, more, more money so that we can, we can do cleanliness. So in Dar es Salaam, there are some municipals which face flood and there are others which don't. But to have that data on the table easily is not easy. So by this platform, we just collect cleanliness data and we centralize it. Then uh, what may the municipalities can do with it, we leave it to them. I want to ask about uh, mobile application. So is it uh, available also for offline use or you need to be connected to the internet? Or what's the, the connection to the internet there for mobile phones? Uh, co okay, coverage or? Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, that is the part we needed to improve to, 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 to make it offline first. Uh, but currently it is just responsive. You can use it on your mobile phone, uh, but without the internet or with a, in, in a low internet connection, it is a little bit a challenge. But we are thinking on uh, making it more uh, uh, offline first. Final questions? Thank the speakers again. Thank you very much.